So, with no further ado, let's go. Yeah, shoot. Yeah, that's it. Short introduction. Uh, Bexy? Yeah, I'll quickly introduce myself. I'm Bexy. I'm from UK PonyCon, where I'm the events lead, volunteer, co lead, and the MC of the convention. Hello. I'm Perry. I'm with Galacon. I was one of the founding staffers of Galacon, and now I'm involved just with the stage hosting, but they can't get me to stop doing that, so I'm going to keep doing that. Yeah, and last, last me. Uh, my name is James. I'm a chairman of uh, Czech Westria Convention in Czech Republic and Slovakia since its beginning in 2014. So that's the short introduction. That's it. Shall we proceed? Yep. We'll yep. talk more yep. about our jobs and conventions in a bit. Yeah. yeah. Just uh, in case uh, you want to tell us something, uh, write to the Discord chat. And There is a specific yeah. channel for yep. questions for the neural net stage. We'll have a and a portion later. So if you think of cool questions, put them in there and we'll get to them. Yep. Yeah, we'd love to answer them. Yep, just yep. first we would have, have a little presentation for y'all. Yeah. That we hope so, you enjoy. Just a short uh, introduction what this is going to be about. Uh, You're probably familiar with the My Little Pony conventions in the real life, not just in the cyberspace. And we would like to talk about them and especially uh, talk about the differences between uh, US conventions and the European conventions. Uh, from uh, a like attendee point of view and uh, organizers point of view there is so if you're interested in this topic you're at the right place just a quick overview of the my little pony conventions in general uh, every event is unique um, I hear from uh, pretty often that uh, you know I've been to 10 or 12 uh, my little pony conventions why should I go to another one and uh, uh, the answer I can give after visiting uh, dozens of conventions all around the globe is that every event is unique with the people, with the size, with the place, with the culture, with everything. So it's still the ponies, but handled differently. Uh, you meet different people and it makes the unique experience. Do you want to add something? No, I think that's a good summary. Yeah, yeah definitely. All right. Of course, uh, conventions are uh, under the constant evolution, especially in the last year, you know, ending of the G4 series, uh, end of BronyCon and stuff uh, connected to that. So we all have been to that, so no, no need to talk about it more. Yeah, this is the common uh, My Little Pony uh, conventions program. You can pretty find all of these activities at most of the events. It's uh, what, what uh, attendees more or less expect. Of course, uh, they are handled different way, especially, for example, the concerts. And we are going to the topic, European versus US burning conventions. So yeah. I'll start. Uh, we'll share this topic. So it's not just me talking all the time. Uh, from the general perspective, the main difference is the language barrier because every country or uh, almost every country in the Europe has its own language. And uh, that's, thing, uh, that's a thing you have to consider. Uh, not every event uh, is uh, in English. Many events are in local languages. And if you, but if you want to go international, you have to make it uh, in the language that... Uh, uh, covers a large uh, amount of people. So that's the first thing. And uh, if you decide to make a local event in foreign language, it's pretty big decision in the beginning. So another topic, just pick one. Mm, I think the currency is a surprisingly important issue because you think like, oh, you can just do exchange, but there's exchange rates. And depending on which country you're from, the exchange rate can be very disadvantageous for you. 
there's stronger currencies and weaker currencies in, in the sense of the you know global market. I'm not talking like because the current your currency sucks or something. We're just that <laughs> it can really be difficult depending on where you're from. When you're from a country where where people comparatively make less money than other countries. You really have to save up. You have to consider exchange. And sometimes you have situations like obviously the pandemic right now is a very very major. Uh, major uh, situation, but things like that that can affect the, the exchange rate very suddenly can make it so that from one moment to the next, you, you money you save can be worth less or more. So that's something you have to plan for, especially when you're traveling uh, into countries that are not in the Eurozone or you are from a country that's not in the Eurozone. Yeah, like um, I think another thing with Europe as well, in America, you can drive 12 hours just to another state, whereas us, if we drive 12 hours, we could pass through three countries, all each having possibly different currencies and different languages. So, but you can find as well as like, if I fly to, let's say Amsterdam for heartwarming, it took me half an hour, like 45 minute flight or something crazy. Whereas people will drive for 12 hours for it as well. So it's just great. Yeah, the thing uh, about the currencies and the different uh, you know, amount of money you want to spend to the conventions um, have sometimes uh, quite funny implications because sometimes when you want something more expensive and uh, you go to Galacon, see the prices, and then you realize it's actually cheaper to fly to Russian PonyCon into the Moscow, buy it there, <laughs> and it's still cheaper. <laughs> because of different living costs, yeah? Yes, exactly. That's also and what you have to uh, put in consideration where you're, for example, setting the prices for the tickets and stuff. Mm. Yeah. Also, it's quite dangerous when you're spending at cons because like, exchanging money can be a bit of a pain so when you get to your cut and a lot of them they don't do you can't exchange coins and stuff so mm -hmm. and you get your notes and you're at con and be like well it'll save me having to change it somewhere else so you, i think i spend more at cons with different currencies than my own it's harder to keep track that's for sure yeah uh, another thing that we have in the europe and uh in the US, I think it's practically non-existent for obvious reason, is that we have a local uh, voice actors who speak for the ponies in the local languages. Yeah, the dub actors, yeah. Yeah, dub actors, uh, or the dubbers, how they are called. So uh, that's more of the, more of the guests uh, you can meet here and see how, for example, the voice acting is different from dubbing and how it's made in different countries and stuff like that. Also, uh, the more I think, the more you go uh, in the Europe to the east, uh, the conventions get more community oriented, not so much the program oriented. So people are tend to stick more together. It's just a pattern that follows the the land. All right, something else, guys, you want to add to this topic? No, not not right now. No, we covered we could, some important yeah, stuff. We can. Uh, there's other differences, but I think they, at that point they become a bit more unique to the individual event. So yeah, we'll discuss that. Yes, right here. Definitely, we can discuss that later. We save the time at the end for the discussions and questions yep. and stuff. So we have Q and A at the end. So yes, yeah, exactly. So after general introduction, Ooh. please, Maxi, can you tell us something about the UK PonyCon? Yes, I'm just going to request control if that's okay yes so my uh, technology i know we yeah. gotta love it thanks no, 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 control it's so all my con that i've helped with is uk pony con um so it's in nottingham this year hopefully um and it has been for the previous two years but unlike other cons we actually do try and move around so we've been in places such as leeds bristol cardiff you know, and to try and go to see different places. And it's what's really nice about that is, as well as being a new place in the UK to go and like for more people to come to, we actually get the chance to have like a little mini holiday at the end and try and explore, which is really nice. <laughs> so we've not got that this year, Nottingham, but Nottingham now just like, it's just so embracing and it's nice knowing the venue. So that's the one downside about moving around a lot is we have to start from scratch 
every venue and finding a venue and stuff like that. So it is that's a really nice reason that we've stayed in Nottingham. Um, it's been held since 2004, which was before Friendship is Magic. So it just shows that these cons existed before Friendship is Magic and they're going to carry on after it's now over, you know? So that's just a really nice way of have, showing the longevity of it. So this year will be the 17th convention. The, I know the maths don't seem to add up, but if you look into the history on the page, we've got a whole history page, you'll see where I think one year doubled up or something. I don't know. I'm not good at maths. Um, so we actually cater to all My Little Pony generations, not just G4. So we started being – so when My Little – well, my little pony. When UK Pony Con started, it was G3 was the main one then, and it just kind of moved round and round. So it was really nice, and everyone just embraces everyone and everything. We usually have about 900 to 1,000 attendees, but again, if you saw on the history website, we started off with, what, 200? And it just shows how the con can really evolve over time. And I've kind of called it a celebration of all our, of all generations of our favourite pastel ponies. There's something for everyone because we are also a family event. Um, so we get a lot of family coming with kids and then we get adult collectors, we get bronies. So there's just every, there's something for everyone. And that's something we pride ourselves on with our events is that someone will find something there. Um, let me, this one. Oh dear be able to click and it should work. Yep. There you go, way. So this is showing some of the artwork from our Leeds convention. And when we held it in Leeds, we actually held it in Royal Armouries, which is a museum, um, which I just found really interesting. And oh, that's a unique we, venue. It was so cool because we actually, because it was a free museum as well. So if people got bored of the ponies, they could just go and wander around the museum. And it was so surreal seeing people huh. in cosplay, just wandering around, looking at, Fine loads art. of different things it yeah. was brilliant um i'll go to this next one uh this is showing 2018's nottingham artwork uh from crystal celebration so this was our 15th anniversary one um and it just shows quite a few of like how the generations of the ponies can be used in our artwork and just our banners so this was current was used as a backdrop for people to take photos um whereas now we've got a backdrop and these usually just go all over the place but it was nice to have them all there and really reiterating the crystal celebration mm. do, do, do. this is 2019's closing ceremony um again this is nottingham i think most most of these apart from first ones are of the nottingham venue just purely because we've got most pictures of that um because this is probably my fifth year with the convention. I don't know. I should really have worked that out. Um, and you can just see everyone there. Uh, and it's just really nice, really full, which is fantastic. <laughs> and this is a picture of a storeholder. Uh, so with our storeholder applications, what we do, we, well, we do an application stage so that we can make sure that we have each gen represented almost equally, which is really nice um, and to make it really diverse. And we have 49 vendors as well as the UK Pony Con stuff that we sell there. You cover all generations. Yeah, we, we, we like to. And I I love going shopping. I save all my money and go shopping there and come back with like 50 plastic horses. <laughs> um, so this is from our music event. This only started, when did I become events lead? It started in Bristol so three years ago and I bought in doing a little music event it started small and then it's just gotten a lot bigger so this is remake but we've also had people such as Prince Whatever and Bass Pone come and perform and it's just a really really nice night um Jam has actually bought some sea pony tails because we had a sea pony <laughs> a, a, a sea yeah. theme and I can just remember looking down and seeing all these sea ponies just flopping around and it was just amazing shoo -be -doo, shoo -be -doo. <laughs> I just hope we weren't the show stealers too much <laughs> um, so as most con organizers know it's so hard to take your own photos at con because usually you're running around <laughs> screaming being like ah so this is uh, so i've made it my thing on the closing ceremony to always make sure i get a selfie of everyone there so this is 
2018. Um, I had to remember that then. And I realized that wearing the horn was a massive problem. So in 2019, no horn, <laughs> no horn. And you can see all of us a lot more. And you, in that photo, you can see committee members, you can see our volunteers and our attendees who we all love so much. And thank you. I'm just, I'm just saying again, another thank you to everyone to help make UK Painicon possible. And I think that's me over. So Ooh. I am going to relinquish my control of this. Oh boy. What? No. You're putting me in charge. Yeah, you're putting no. me in charge. Yeah, but oh, now no. you're in oh, charge. No. You're putting me in charge. You sure you want to do that? Yeah. I Weird so things happen. Already. <laughs> <laughs> Weird things happen and I'm in charge. All right. Okay, Galacon is very different from UK PonyCon. I think UK PonyCon is terrific is one of the examples to have at this panel because it's very unique in the brony space especially, but I think Galacon is a very classic representative at this point of a brony convention, what one could consider a proper classic brony convention that started as the Friendship is Magic stuff became big and just kind of went from there. We started originally in 2012 in Stuttgart. We were in a Tiny little hostel, was cozy, was nice. Nobody knew what they were doing, but they all tried their best because he, this is the thing. Uh, this is something I discussed with Bexie and Jamas before the panel when we were just kind of figuring out topics. Most people don't decide to start these conventions. Like Jamis has a story for that later too, I'm sure. But, <laughs> and you, know, you don't yeah. just sit up one day and yes. say, you know what? I'm totally going to become a pony organizer. <laughs> no, usually it's like, People have ideas and make jokes, and then at some point the jokes become real, and then you don't know what happened. <laughs> I remember when I was asked to set up with Galacon, they said, oh, you want to help out with this thing we're maybe doing? And I said, okay, but maybe just a little. Maybe just <laughs> Famous a little. last words, eh? <laughs> yes, and then maybe just a little became four, was 400 attendees, I think, in the first year. 800 in the second year when we moved to Ludwigsburg, and 1,200 to 1,300 every time since. That's what the little thing became. So Galcon's really been, been grew as big as the, the Friendship is Magic fandom did at the time. Our decision to be in English was because we figured we're kind of we're kind of in this kind of like pretty central position when you look at most of Europe, especially more Western Europe. And we figured, okay, I mean, we don't just want just Germans to come, so we'll do it in English, I guess. And that turned out to be a good decision, not an easy decision, but a good decision. Because at this point, we have like half of our attendees are Germans and the other half are people from all over the place. So let me click. Just to give you a few impressions of Galacon, what you saw there on the left were our three wonderful mascots, Kani, of course, being the most famous one. Here we have all the wonderful people that come to Galacon. This is from 20, all the pictures I'm showing you are from 2019, but we have a bunch of galleries and pictures from the previous years. Um, this is just from the main stage. This is the view you get when you're on the main stage. During the more popular panels, especially opening ceremonies and the charity auction. And let me tell you, the view doesn't get old. It's, it's still crazy. I stand there and it's like, all these people come and want to see people like me, want to see the VIPs, want to see our community guests, our panelists, all these fantastic people, the cosplayers, all these people. And you're all coming and cheering and it's, Oh, that's the most positive energy imaginable. Like that's, that makes so much stress at work worth it. Here we have just, uh, just one of the impressions from our party event. Uh, one of the unique selling points of Galcon, you know, that's what they call the fence. The fancy investors call it a UVP or something. Um, USP, USP, right. Uh, is that we have two evening events. We have a party, we got a party, which is more of a classic rave with electronic music and lots of dancing. And we have the gala ball, which is more for traditional music, uh, classic dancing, and everyone gets to dress up a bit fancy. Since we are called GalaCon, we wanted to have a little bit of both. Here you just see an impression from later in the evening as this wonderful person is having a good time raving late into the night. Here we see our, one of our cosplay events, just a really nice range there of just all the different costumes we get. People always compete, show off their awesome costumes. Always a super big blast for me to present. Really happy to see when people come and just, I may put this together, here's my base cannon, here's my cool interpretation of this character, here's this, here's that. So awesome every time. Uh, let's see what else we got. Over the years, Galcon has of course tried to figure out, hey, what can we do that keeps people interested and that's a bit fresh? This is one of the things we came up with over the years. It's the buckball competition. 
uh, we've added other things like a scavenger hunt and some other activities people can participate in that are not just panels and VIPs because those are all super good. But there's people who think, oh, I've gone to like five gala cons. Maybe I want to do something that's not just sitting at panels once. So we have more options and we try to keep things fresh as we're able. And here we have just one of the many examples of our beautiful vending booths, the situations you can get into with colorful people buying colorful things. We have all made, so many like dozens of fantastic vendors and it's, it's of course more focused less on the collecting nature than it is like a, for instance at UK PonyCon. <laughs> you get more you get more artwork, you get a lot of handmade things. It's always super fun to fun to see and it makes the convention more colorful and interesting just by people being there and showing off their awesome creations. Uh, oh, what, what do we have next? Did, I swear I didn't just include this picture because I'm in it. <laughs> <laughs> I promise. But um, this is one of the events, of course, that is very near and dear to my heart. It is the charity auction. Super fun. Something I remember we originally started doing because furry conventions do it. And we thought, you know, some of our whole organizers at the time had, had experience with furry conventions and thought, hey, maybe that works for ponies too. And I was not even supposed to originally actually host the first Galacon charity auction. Someone else was, but she got injured, sadly and couldn't stand on the stage. So five minutes before the event, people were like, oh, Perry, you're going to do this, right? <laughs> Horrible. I did a terrible job, too. Like, I was, I was sleep deprived. I hadn't eaten enough. I did all the convention no-nos, right? The stuff you're not supposed to do. I didn't sleep. I didn't eat. I didn't drink. I had to run to the bathroom like six times during the, the panel because I was drinking so much and I was so nervous. Terrible. But we had a good time, and that's ultimately what made it work, even though I did an objectively bad job, but people like the fun, the energy, the community spirit. And every year since we've worked hard to create a lot of awesome opportunities for charity. We work with Bronies for Good with their charities. People donate fantastic artwork every time, fantastic craftsmanship, really beautiful things that I'm, seriously, I don't just say that, honored to auction off every time. Here's just one of the many examples here. We have GM Barrow, who's also at Pony Fest, by the way, uh, auctioning off, helping me auction off some of her signed books about Daring Do. But yes, every time a super blast. Here is the closing ceremony from 2019. These are just some of the staffers, organizers, panelists, volunteers. So many people who work really, really hard every year. And it is difficult to entice people to volunteer because on paper, it, it's kind of a difficult deal. You don't get paid and you work hard all weekend. But these people are so fantastic. And without them, conventions could not happen at all. It's it's something where I always think you are so important. You are so cool. We can't thank that enough. So people who work hard, whether it's just, and I put that in quotes because it still means a lot, just for the weekend or the whole year round, it's always super important. And everyone is really appreciated, whether they're on this picture or not. So that's just some of the impressions from GalCon. Obviously, every year is a little bit different, but I think it gives a good overview of what makes GalCon GalCon. And now I'm going to give away the power to Jemis because we have another convention we're going to talk about. Okay. Am I in charge again? Yes. I suppose so. Good. Thanks. <laughs> so, Czechvestria, what should I say in the beginning? Probably also different than the UK PonyCon and uh, Galacon alike. It's held in Prague in Czech Republic since 2014. Um, 350 to 40 attendees, so you see that event is much smaller uh, than Galacon, like third and half of the UK PonyCon, um, which uh, makes it, uh, you know, a different experience uh, for the organizers and also attendees alike. Uh, we also made the, the decision in the beginning uh, to hold this uh, event in uh, English, like uh, as the main language, so all panels, all workshops, everything is in English. Uh, it was not an easy, but, uh, an uh, easy one, uh, but in the long run, uh, it's the only way how you can uh, invite the people from abroad. So today we have like 60% from Czech Republic and Slovakia and 40% from abroad, which is great. Uh, so far, this is the only fan event held in English uh, in the Czech Republic, and it was totally worth it. Uh, the motto that uh, I've been thinking about is like, we promised it, we made it, and we blame M.A. Larson for it. You know, the reason how some things happens 
I think there are a lot of uh, things in this fandom that happens because of uh, Mitch Larson, and Czech Vestria tends to be, you know, one of those things. Uh, at the Galacon 2012, there were a few of us, and we've been so overwhelmed and so, uh, you know, full of joy that we said, oh, it would be great to make such an event also in, uh, in Czech Republic. Uh, we made a lot of jokes about that. Then in 2013, we went to Paris. Uh, we met M.A. Larson there. And uh, while we, we, uh, we wanted him to sign the Czech and Slovak uh, Bronies flag, just looked at that and said, yeah, che oh, is that Czech Republic and Slovakia? Oh, yes. Uh, where it's uh, uh, going to be the, uh, the convention in Prague? Um, uh, actually, we are planning something for next year. The guy who said that is now the vice chair of Czech Vestria, Melga. And <laughs> Mitch said, okay, I hope you're going to invite me. Bye, guys. And when we've been leaving, it was like, man, now we have to make the convention and invite M.A. Larson. What have you done? <laughs> All right. That's somehow, sometimes how uh, you know, con uh, convention starts. You can decide, uh, uh, I'm going to start now. And sometimes, you know, these... Uh, uh, totally unexpected events uh, happens and they will just, you know, throw you into the stream of events and then you cannot stop. Well, enough of the history. Uh, I think most of the activities uh, uh, and uh, stuff that's happening at the conventions, you can find them also in Czech Vestria. So uh, I'll focus on things that are a little bit different, uh, that are unique uh, for us. Uh, the first thing is that we are a three-day event. On the Friday, we uh, have a My Little Pony themed LARP through the city. So, basically, a next page. Yes, it works. Uh, we meet together in the morning. Uh, we turn people into ponies, send them... Come on. Send them through the gates to Equestria, and then they go through the city uh, doing the tasks, following the story, uh, playing as a ponies, and in the end, it ends at the pre party. So that's like the uh, warm up before the convention actually starts. When it starts, it's the thing you, uh, you are used to. So the panels, workshops, and all other stuff. Uh, you usually meet. It's not at the, as big as in the size as uh, bigger events, but it still has its charm. I think uh, many people who were there <laughs> can uh, tell you what's the, what's the spirit and what's the difference in the spirit. Beside the panels, you can do stuff like child drawing outside the venue and all other activities or just hanging out with people. Uh, one of the specialties, and I think Czech Vestria is the last one, uh, last uh, pony event in the Europe that implemented this, it's the PlushyCon. You know, bronies can have conventions. Why their plushies cannot have their own conventions at the conventions? PlushyCon is awesome. Shout out yeah. to the PlushyCon people. Definitely. Definitely. I'd love to, for it to come to UK PonyCon. Ooh. We, we still got yeah. it. Other, uh, other things, you can find the concerts. Uh, I included this mainly because uh, it's the Prince whatever uh, performing at the last Czech Vestria. Now he's performing on the other stage of the same <laughs> here at the uh, Ponyfest <laughs> online. And I think uh, we all had a really good time with the music, the lasers and all, love good, lasers. Love, all good stuff. Well, uh, if you're not a super big convention, uh, you cannot, you know, uh, you have to offer attendees something that's unique or something unexpected. Uh, you cannot compete with the big events with, uh, you know, we are going to invite more guests because it's not possible. You do not have money for that. So you create uh, the things that uh, uh, are not possible uh, at the bigger events and you create uh, some... Uh, unexpected stuff that people will remember and enjoy. So if you walk to the, con uh, to the con site, you can find things like these, you know, life-size ponies. And if this is not enough for, uh, you know, surprising thing, when you go outside, you can find stuff like this. Uh, 
<laughs> this is the fountain in front of the venue. I was uh, there. I know. Yeah. <laughs> With the guys and the girls uh, in the sea pony suits. Uh, and the fun part, the most funny part of this is that uh, this was uh, organized by our VIP guests. Ellie Ray. Yeah. You cannot stop her. She's unstoppable. Yeah, you cannot stop her. And she does things like this. And, you know, those people in background, they do not belong to the convention. They just came and look <laughs> what's happening, what's going on. And uh, these kind of events are uh, especially great to do, you know, the community feeling and stuff and having fun, not just sitting at the panels or workshops, just enjoy the spontaneous fun like this. You know, where in the world you can dress up like a sea pony and lay into the fountain with your favorite voice actor. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> yeah, of course, uh, we have oh. security auction. Yeah, that's Perry and her legendary head. Uh, I think we did not mention it before, but uh, every convention has its own culture, uh, own history, own memes, uh, own stuff. Uh, and some of those stuff are like the uh, just local for one event. And there are things that are, for example, continent wide. So if you invite Perry to moderate the auction, uh, <laughs> she comes with a head. And uh, at all conventions I've been to, I think, when she's been moderating the, uh, the auction, she always sell the head for the ridiculous amount of money. It's for, the Joker. Yeah. it's for charity yeah it's for charity so <laughs> that's why i rolled with it because it's funny and silly but also because most importantly it's for a good cause you get to see me sell silly hats for a good cause at least yeah and as with uh, all the events uh it's not just one man show it's dozens man show it's like uh, uh you know for the core organization team it's uh, like a part-time job for the half a year or longer, and uh, then many more people at the place, be it the volunteers, uh, the support staff, or even the guests and the community guests, because we are working all together to make awesome events for everyone. And yeah, as Perry said, there is never enough thanks uh, to all those people who helped to create this kind of events. Like, yeah, my sincere thank you to everyone who helped uh, make Czech Westria happen. And as the last thing, this is the group picture. You know, uh, all uh, people, all attendees, all guests, all community guests, uh, most of the organizers, everyone together. I think this picture is uh, what defines Czech Westria. We enjoy the panels, we enjoy the program, we enjoy everything as uh, all other events. But the main thing is that we are experiencing it together. That's the probably the best way how to describe it. Be it the, be it the workshops, signatures, or just hanging, hanging around the bar, drinking the best and cheapest cider all around. <laughs> OK, I think that's uh, everything for Czech Westria. So uh, it's not uh, these three. Uh, conventions we just described are, of course, not the only uh, big events in the Europe. There are many others, like Hearts for Mincon in Netherlands, Brony Scott uh, in the uh, United Kingdom, Griffish Isles uh, in Manchester, Derbfest for Bronycon in Moscow, My Little Convent and similar uh, ones in the Poland. Uh, Everfree Encore in Germany, that's a music festival. Perry, do you want to say something about it? Uh, that's kind of a spin-off of Galacon of sorts. It's organized by most of the same people. But the idea was, hey, maybe we want to do something a bit different from a usual convention. So it's more like, if you know what like a metal fest or like Wacken or something is like, just much smaller in the pony community music, that's what it's like. We all hang out in a barn, we camp, and we love music all day long. So And all night, to be honest, <laughs> until, we, until we get told to go to bed. So that's what it is. It's a bit different, but it's super fun if you love partying. Yep. Uh, thanks. And uh, the bottom line of this is that, of course, uh, all these events uh, that are here on the slide are not the only ones that's happening in the Europe. 
as we talked in the beginning, uh, there is a, usually the language barrier between the countries in the Europe. And I think that applies not just in the Europe, but also in other parts of the world. And there are many My Little Pony events uh, that are held in local language. And it, uh, it's not just the small ones. We have uh, events for hundreds of people that are held just in Czech language, but nobody knows uh, about them beyond our borders because the language is usually the barrier, especially our language, which is pretty unique, uh, that uh, makes it uh, mm, a bit inaccessible for people from abroad. So these, uh, uh, these events are happening all across the continent. Did I forget about some? Hmm. No? No, that's okay. a good summary. Yeah. All right, so why visit European My Little Pony Conventions? That awesome. All right, yep, who wants to good. the fir first topic? I mean, yeah, they're good. That's kind of it. I mean, obviously we're biased, but I yeah. think for people who are not from Europe, I think the main selling point I would say is uh, you get to see different places and you have to remember in America, like Bex, you said earlier, like you drive 12 hours, you're still in America. No such thing in Europe. If you, for instance, went to Galacon, just as an example, because Germany is kind of in the middle, you drive six to 12 hours, you're guaranteed in a different country, basically. So if you want to see a different place, you want to see, I want to make a trip out of it. Going to a European convention is basically the best way to do it. You're a few hours in a plane, you're in a country with different food, different language, different, different sites to see. It's just, it's never easier, basically, because we all smush together so close in Europe. A pony convention is a great adv advantage, a great opportunity to say, hey, we're going to see some cool new things and some cool new cultures and make some new friends. Definitely some of my favorite foods, of course, <laughs> going to uh, other cons elsewhere as well, which has been quite nice. Um, I think it's also really nice, is, as we spoke about language barrier and stuff before, you can go places and, you know, there is a language barrier, but you all just adore pastel ponies and you all just sit with this common knot and it's just so nice. It really is. Yeah, that's one of the things. Actually, I think uh, the, uh, these barriers and differences are uh, one of the things uh, that makes these events more unique mm -hmm. uh, because uh, it's the same phenomenon handled by different cultures. Those cultures are really close, but they're still different. They have different customs and things. So when you go to a pony convention uh, into another country, you, you still see bronies, you still see uh, ponies, but uh, handled in a slightly different way, which is pretty refreshing because when you're visiting one type uh, of the convention all the time over and over, and that's what Perry talked about, you know, uh, adding something new, this could be the thing that uh, makes it uh, a little bit broader. You usually find people traveling as well. So like, cause I'm from the UK, so I fly out to Europe all the time. And when you get to the airport, you just see someone with a plushie poking out of their bag and it's like, oh, you want to come over? And it's just a great way of talking as well there. Just travel, travel buddies. Yeah, exactly. When you arrive alone to a different country and you see somebody uh, with, with a, a pony shirt or pony shirts or anything, clearly a brony and it's like something you have instantly something in common and you can start the conversation you immediately like, have a oh, friend I see. Yeah. Huh? immediately have a friend yes yes that's it and of course uh, always it's not just a convention it's uh, uh, when you travel this far uh, or even if it's just another country next to you just spend time not just at the convention but also looking around you know the city the country and everything it does not have to be weeks, it could be days, but it's definitely worth it. All right. I want to make sure we get to the, to the yeah. end so you can get to your question soon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, should I message to get the question? I'm, I'm already on that. I'm already Are you on it? Are you on it? Yes. We're going to be opening ourselves up for questions because we're just going to say yeah. a few final words on the presentation. Right. But exactly. we're going to request to be open for, for questions now. So think of questions, put them in the Neuronet stage questions channel. Think about them good. There's a slow mode thing on there. Yeah. So, so we'll think be able of, to catch well, we say, say oh, our final, final lovely words here. We're going to be open for your questions right after. 
All right, some final words, uh, something from behind the curtain of the organization teams. You know, as the conventions, every org team is unique with the own culture, relationships, the way they work. We all work voluntarily just because we want to, you know, it's... We just love it. Yeah. Like, you know, um, I someone asked me, oh, how much do you get paid for doing New Caponicon? And I'm like, probably about three water bottles that I downed during the charity auction. <laughs> you know, that's, that's all I, like, it's going to sound so cliche, but our payment is seeing the smiles at the end. Like, I know it sounds really, really cliche. It's true though. I end up in tears. Like mm -hmm. every single con, some people come up and be like, I've had the best like weekend of my life. <laughs> you know, it's that's, mm, that's so what sweet. makes it so worthwhile. Very much uh, so. Exactly. It's one of the definitions of the freedom, right? You know, mm. we are doing it because we want to, not because we must. Yeah. That's and great. I think if you're more passionate about something, you do tend to work harder on it as well. And like, there'll be nights when I don't even realize I'm so in the zone. And then all of a sudden it's like two in the morning and I'm like, I need to be up at six. Oh dear. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's another point. You know, uh, main part of the organizer's work, especially at the place, is handling the problems and mistakes. And if you do not see them as the uh, attendee, organizers do a good job. And believe me, it's not a question if these uh, problems and mistakes are going to happen, but when they are going to happen. Yes, definitely. Like, so, I remember losing my mic before I was meant to be on stage, and then I realized it was attached, and I was having a full bone panic attack, and then I realized it's a year I've got a head mic, and it was attached to my head. Oh. Yeah, I remember my uh, chief of staff stealing my notes for the opening ceremony in 2017, like five minutes before the opening ceremony, so I had to improvise, but it happened. <laughs> and right after the ceremony, he came to me and handed me over the list and said, oh, uh, I find this in your backpack. It was pretty useful. I'm going to kill you so slowly and painfully. <laughs> but yeah, it happens all the time. The getting thing, quite a lot of questions as well. I know. I'm really just going to say, just so people know, this is the thing. Stuff that looks great in the front probably is a disaster in the back. And I'm not saying that because <laughs> people are purposely like not caring. It's just, there's always stuff going wrong. It's just normal. Yeah. You have so many moving parts, as people say. It's just impossible for everything to just fit together. No matter how, no matter how experienced you are, no matter how much you practice, it doesn't matter. But that's the thing. The important part is people in the front don't notice. It's like when you have a stage play and every, like like uh, and your costume is falling apart uh, while you're getting ready. If as long as nobody can see it while you're performing, it's fine if it falls apart in the end. It, it's okay. The important thing is that for the purpose you have, it works out, and that's the passion that I think makes everything possible. That's the glue that keeps the you know the proverbial falling apart costume together. Is is the passion. Just people say, okay, this just has to work and people need to have a good time. If it's pretty, doesn't matter. If it, everything functions perfectly all the time, doesn't matter. As long as people have a great time in the end, it was worth it. That's what so I always mean. Yes. Yeah. So also, yeah. I always encourage people to just really quick to volunteer because trust me, we're not as cool yeah. or high and mighty or anything as we might look because you think, oh, you've done this mm -hmm. so long. You know everything. No, we don't. We're just all just mm -hmm. goofy nerds. We love everyone who's also goofy nerd and says, hey, I want to help. Like I said, the passion is the real important part. Everything else you can learn. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it might not seem so, the usual strategy when something does not work, like, you know, uh, the panel went wrong or your part of your cosplay went wrong, uh, you just throw it away and pretend it's never meant to happen. Yep. You know, yeah. usual My cosplay thing. fell apart whilst presenting the cosplay yeah. competition and I just kind of <laughs> went, well, this is why I'm not winning. <laughs> yeah, see, you just you know, make you it fun. You make yeah. it fun and people love it. It's You just roll with it. Yeah, and uh, maybe one more thing for the volunteering. Yes. Uh, it's uh, really important that people uh, are going to help us with these events and we do not seek for somebody who's super highly skilled. You know, uh, if you have a passion and if you want to help, you're always welcome. I think uh, Charlie in a few hours uh, is going to have a chairman panel too and I think he will probably confirm what I say now. You do not need to be uh, any superman. We can uh, teach you everything you need and your yeah. help will be highly appreciated. Yeah, Maybe. like I 
Mm-hmm. I'll, let, I'll let you carry. I just wanted to make the last word before the questions. So if you yeah. want to say, go on. I just want to say, I I volunteered with no knowledge of things and I got thrown into events because I'm a bit confident. And then I volunteered for a couple of years. Then I went on to just being an events assistant. And then all of a sudden I ended up being the events lead. And I was like, where's this? I've not got any practical training for this at all and it's just stuff you pick up as you go along and now that's helped shape my career outside of yeah you learn real skills these are real skills i've gone into the event sector that side and it's just amazing and also people go oh but i can't put on my cv people laugh at you know oh they don't oh no they love it and as soon as you mention what you've done and you've got a niche thing that you're passionate about you'll light up in that interview as well and you'll be like yes i I do like this like like you don't need to give like a whole like rundown of why my little pony is but if you say i was like even if you were like in a super serious business meeting you say i helped organize an event with over a thousand visitors nobody says oh that's nothing you know people are like wow that's rad Exactly. You can always prove by this that uh, you've been part of the, t- of the team, the team succeeded. So uh, you, ca- you might be good at the skills on your own, but the teamwork can be learned only working in a team. And this is a really good way how to uh, you know, get the first experience in this. All right. I think let's and, say we should probably all go around by yeah, way, for the question part. We should probably like we go in, in a, yeah, you know, I'll we just, take turns pick, t- mm-hmm. picking questions, I would say. All right. I'll say just uh, one last word because I think oh, sorry. it's pretty important. It's the last line on the slide. You know, when you say I liked it, thanks to the organizers or to the volunteers or to the guests, to, to community guests, it is important and it has much more power than you can even imagine. Saying you know, thanks means so much. Say thanks, please mm-hmm. do, because Definitely. it has uh, uh, it's a huge motivation to uh, make that event again. You know, not staying on the stage and talking to hundreds of people, you know, not uh, being in touch with the VIP guests, but, uh, but receiving thanks for, from attendees that's the best reward the, there can be. And, you know, uh, you, it might seem that it's a small thing that cannot make any difference. But from my own experience, like in half year when I'm deciding if I'm going to do this again or not, and I'm thinking, okay, uh, tired nights, uh, you know, I did not have a time, uh, I had to solve the problems, there were argues, all that bad things, and then I remember, hmm, there was like two people who said, yeah, I really like it. Thanks. I'm looking forward to see it again. And it's like, hmm, yeah, these three people made the difference. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to do it again. And yeah, that's how it works. So yeah, it works even if you do not believe it. You can make the difference. Great. Ready for questions now? We, should, we need All to make right. sure we answer them not super strong, yeah. like... Not like super short, but you know what I mean. We, I'm looking at yeah. the clock. <laughs> yeah, I've just seen the clock as well. So that means you pick the first question. All right. Mm, uh, I'm pointing at you. <laughs> which question it is? Uh, pick pick one from the from the list on the neural net stage questions channel. Uh, all right. So pick one. Some, some of them are addressed specifically to you, but you can pick any of them that are all right. general as well. All right, first question. Uh, are there conventions you did not enjoy at all or that you regret going to? Um, no. <laughs> Actually, I enjoyed every event, every single event I went to, even if it uh, tends to fall apart, and it happened a few times, but I enjoyed it in a way. You know, it does not have to be super fancy to uh, to enjoy it. I do you remember one uh, one convention when I where I was uh, invited as a uh, community guest for the first time, and uh, I uh, entered the building and uh, they asked me for uh, for a ticket and I said, you know, I'm a guest, I don't have a ticket, so you're a guest. Ah, that's that's funny, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> so, okay, this is my ID and this is the name in the program and in the oh, community guide. Oh, oh I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> it yeah. happens. It happens. Yeah, I, I enjoyed every single event I've been to. 
All right, Bexy, you pick a question next. Should we just go from the top down because it's not zooming up? I just think. But that's the thing, our order is different because for me, you're the next one in line. No, I just mean on the Discord question. Should we just. Oh, no, I would say just pick because some of you might not be sure what to answer, whatever, since we have a bit on a tight time. I would say pick one you like. That you well, have this is going to say about. Sound very vain because I'm picking one that's addressed to me. But that's have you had to change UK PonyCon in ways due to increase popularity of G4, the Brony fandom generally? Yeah. I'm also marking questions um, we've answered with a star, just so you know. Um, we have had to change it a bit. Like, I think when I first joined the convention, it, that was just the merge. And when I first joined, there was two event rooms whereas now we we usually look for about five event rooms um karaoke has always kind of been popular ccg we've had it in the music oh, yeah. event is something i've added in in the past uh, couple of years um and that seems to be really fun but we still keep a load of our stuff we used to do and bronies have embraced that like um bronies love do it love the history talks and it's awesome we also, have, we also have a thing called pinch the parcel which it's going to take me too long to explain the rules, but it's something that's been the UK pony of contradiction. And the first thing people go is, when's pinch your parcel? And it doesn't matter who, it's just amazing. And everyone embraces everyone. Is it like a game? Like, is it a game? Yeah, it's kind of, it's, it's you steal parcels of people, but it's a lot nicer than that. Everyone ends up oh. with something at the end. Oh, that um, great. But a lot of, we found a lot of the collectors, whilst they do really enjoy the events, a lot of them really enjoy shopping more. So that's why we still put in a lot in the market. Well, store we we don't call our vendors vendors we call them stall holders because they're all like individual uh stall holders there um yeah. so that's something we've kept but yeah we've we've embraced um the bronies we've had to change things but it's made it really it's made it like a whole thing really and it's very nice um and everyone embraces everyone um I don't know. If I've missed off anything from that, feel free to just like message me and I can talk the hind leg off a donkey about UK PonyCon. So, but I'll pass the question over to Perry now. Okay. I am going to summarize three questions because to me, they kind of all hit the same note that I would hit in my answer. Uh, it's the question, how do you start a convention? How is it? For, how is the first time starting a convention? How is it the first time going to a convention? How is it the first time volunteering at a convention? For all those three things, I would say, listen to people who've done it don't be shy don't be shy to ask because trust me there's always someone who's been there and they have advice and that is awesome because why not benefit from all that shared knowledge you know it's all together all of us together who's been to conventions who's organized conventions who's volunteered at conventions why not benefit from that like those years and years of combined days you know of of experience and there's really no reason to be shy. It's never too late to go to your first convention. There's, it's never too uh, late to, to volunteer the first time. Seriously, just ask. That's the thing. That, like You might say, yeah, but that's what we're asking. No, I'm telling you, go to someone. Sign up for something. Don't be afraid. And if you have questions, ask other people who've been there on online forums, Twitter, whatever. Email the conventions even. Just like ask them, hey, where can I go find people who can take away some of my, my shyness or anxiety? Just ask. Because the only thing you can really do wrong is, and I would even then say it depends, but the only thing you can really do wrong is thinking, oh, I have to do everything by myself. I don't need anyone's advice because, for instance, at my first pony convention i forgot to eat enough and that was bad actually i really got dizzy not good so ask someone who can tell you hey i'm going to remind you to drink enough water and eat something because when you're really full of adrenaline you're having a good time it's really easy to forget when you want to organize a meetup that's a good way to start before you do a whole convention you might have a little need up in your area ask someone who's done it who's done it in a different area ask your friends ask someone who's like yep this is the sort of thing you need to look out for when picking a venue or a restaurant or something like that I'll also talk say to that, people. Talk like, to people. We don't bite. We love yeah. to share our knowledge. We like you notice in fandoms, people can be quite elitist. Whereas I've never noticed anyone to be elitist here. I can just, I know, I can just send a DM to someone, be like, "Hi, you're doing this. Can I have some info or stuff?" And people reply. So honestly, don't be afraid to talk to us. And or if you want any further, like I know all three of us would easily answer anything. Yes, definitely. All right, Jam is picking up a question. Okay, another question. Are you planning to organize at least one more Czech West Tria? 
Well, uh, I usually answer this because most of the crew uh, is listening. Uh, I uh, answer to this, we do not have any plans to end. I cannot make any promises, especially not uh, at this point, mm -hmm. but we do not have any plans to end our activities. So that's it. I cannot say now it's going to be or it not, it's not going to be because it would be uh, inappropriate and pretty unfair to the rest of the team. You have to agree on that, uh, you know, together. So Big that was a quick one. Pick a question. Um, how has UK PonyCon been the previous year after the end of BronyCon? I've just summarized that really quickly. Still good, still awesome. We still had a fantastic turnout. And it actually the weekend of the last UK PonyCon was the we, was the weekend of the last episode of Friendship is Magic. So besides me having to run around and be like, no spoilers, because I am running off caffeine, um, it was amazing. And you could feel the sense of community. And I like, on, if you go on YouTube and watch the closing ceremony, and watch my speech and closing ceremony, I've spoken a lot about it there. But as long as people want us and they want these cons to keep happening and they keep volunteering, buying tickets and stuff like that, as long as you want us, we'll be there. Absolutely. I think that's the As key. long as you care, we will care. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll right. pick. I'll pick More another question. Or... I'll pick no. another question. I, I think, think this might be question. our last question. Yeah. Go on, Perry. Pick a good right. one. Yep. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> There's no pressure yes. at all. <laughs> um, oh, these are all good. Honestly, again, if people still have questions after, I don't mind being DM'd. Like, it's fine. Same. Go yeah, for same. it. Same. Go for it. I might take a moment to respond because I also have a vendor booth, a uh, shameless plug, but you, you should check it out. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm going to definitely get back to you because I love being able to share the experiences. Like I said, why make the same mistakes if people before you have made mistakes and can tell you all about it? Um, what's a good one to end on? Yeah, honestly, like the COVID-19 situation is probably because it's kind of, you know, on everyone's mind. Uh, it's definitely affected planning for GaoCon, obviously, since we did have to officially postpone. Obviously, nobody made that decision lightly or happily, but it was important. Um, I know Chiquester wasn't going to be again this year anyway, which I guess in this yep. situation is lucky. That yeah, you didn't have to really lucky in this. It's unfortunate that I have to say that, but it's, it's sadly kind of lucky for UK PonyCon. Poor Bexy, look at her, just kind of squirming. <laughs> UK PonyCon is scheduled serious. for it's keeping October. Me awake at night. It's keeping it, me awake at night. It's, it's scheduled for October. Nobody oh. knows what the world is looking like next week, let alone October right now. So I seriously feel for you, Bexy. But yeah, it's something where I say, like, this is why PonyFest is so important. This is why I'm happy to be involved with PonyFest. Definitely. And, I think Jamis and Bexy feel the same way. It can, it, it's obviously not the exact same. Yeah. It's not the exact same, but it fills some of the gap where we all feel lonely at home. We're all stuck. We have all lockdown orders or we have supposed to stay at home a lot or we have to work from home. You feel like you're never going to go out. You, you, all these events you had planned, you, you Galacon is next year. You can't look forward to that in August now. So I think mm -hmm. this is a great thing about PonyFest, which I'm so happy people started it and I, I get to be involved with it. Yes, the heart is very much a thing because we're all sticking together. The community is not going away just because we're all stuck at home. The conventions and the fun goes on. So yeah, that's really a good thing to end it on, I think. And yeah. just real, real quick, because yep. some people ask me what I'm going to do with my hat. I don't, didn't plan on auctioning a hat, but if someone DMs me, I'm going to give you 100 euros for the hat and I will donate the 100 euros to, the char to a charity that's for COVID-19 relief. So just saying, if someone wants a hat, just DM me. This is me explicitly saying, I DM me now, the money will go to charity. Oh, I'll All post right. a screenshot. I <laughs> think we made it to the very end. Yeah. yeah. So, so happy and, to have been here. Yeah. Definitely. And you. honestly, uh, any questions, to. hit us up. Mm -hmm. Yes. And thank I you think so we're much all for on... coming to our panel. Definitely. Ah. We're all on Discord and we're all on Twitter as well. So yes. just yes. drop us. And we'd love to hear from you. Yeah. Let's keep a, keep a, keep a friendship magic rolling. Yeah, yes. And uh, despite the last year moods when the G4 ended, you see, this is not the end because we won't let it end. No. You know, as long as you're coming to the conventions, US uh, and Europe alike, we are going to organize them for you because 
people you are uh, you want them so we organize them that's also the way uh, how the ponyfest uh, online was created so even if it seemed like the end of the brony fandom it actually turned out to be the new beginning <laughs> so see you anywhere in the world Yay. do not hesitate to you know approach us ask us whatever you want so Take care, everybody. Bye -bye. Be safe. Care, Be safe. Stay healthy. Be kind to each other.